Every day, all over the world, people working in laboratories are injured and expensive damages are caused by accidents that could have been avoided if the people would have followed safe working practices. This video wants to give you advice on how to work safely in a laboratory environment so that you can avoid unnecessary risks to yourself and others. The work area has to be kept neat and tidy. No eating or drinking is allowed in laboratories. No running. No bags are permitted on the laboratory floors or in corridors. Protection. Chemicals should always be treated with respect. Do your best to avoid unnecessary contact. To protect yourself from chemicals, protective clothing is required. Safety goggles and laboratory coat have to be worn at all times in a laboratory. Wear proper footwear. Shoes must have a solid sole and must enclose the entire foot. When working with hazardous chemicals, in addition, gloves have to be worn. Make sure that the material of the gloves is suitable for the chemicals you are handling, as some chemicals can penetrate unsuitable glove materials easily. Chemical Hazards Many chemicals have dangerous characteristics. They may be flammable, explosive, oxidizing, irritant, toxic, corrosive, damaging to the environment. In addition, they may be cancerogenic, mutagenic, or teratogenic. Before you use chemicals, always inform yourself about possible dangers. Besides the name and the hazard symbol, you can find information about the specific dangers of the chemicals and also precaution on the labels of the bottle. Many labels contain, besides the direct safety information, additional information in risk phrases or R phrases and safety phrases or S phrases. Books and information materials of the labor associations provide more detailed information about the specific hazards of a chemical. Safety posters attached in the laboratories provide quick access to safety information and precaution measures of often used chemicals. Material safety data sheets are provided by the supplier of your chemicals and give detailed information about the chemical and hazard properties of the respective chemical, also in the English language. MSDS and safety guidelines are also available on CD-ROM. and online on the Internet. It is important to label any glass or flask you fill. As many hazardous solutions look just like water,
accidents. Most accidents occur because there is a breakdown in safe work procedures and administrative control. Glassware is sharp when broken. Chemicals can be corrosive or toxic. Even a wet floor can cause an accident. Even small accidents can lead to a major disaster. It is therefore important to report all accidents immediately. Cleaning up minor accidents immediately avoids any danger for a later accident. Working with chemicals. To make the laboratory a safe place, safe working practices have to be followed. When heating a liquid in a test tube, always point the test tube away from other people. Never fill a pipette with your mouth. Use a pipette filler instead. Always fill a burette below eye level. If gases have to be smelled, wharf them toward your nose. Gas cylinders have to be transported in proper trolleys. Make sure that the safety cap is always firmly attached when you transport gas cylinders. If a cylinder is too heavy for you to handle alone, get a second person to assist you. In the laboratory, Gas cylinders have to be secured against toggling with a chain. Heavy bottles that have to be handled with both hands may not be stored over head height. Large bottles should be carried in a carrier. If no carrier is available, a plastic bucket may do the job. Experiments that may produce hazardous gases have to be carried out in a fume cupboard. Make sure that the hood is closed properly. Ensure that the hood is functioning properly. Spills of chemicals on the bench or the floor have to be cleaned up immediately to avoid accidental contact with the skin. Diluted acids can be further diluted with water. Concentrated acids must be neutralized with sodium hydrogen carbonate before disposing them down the sink. For concentrated bases, neutralize with diluted acid first. Every chemical experiment leaves laboratory waste. Some of these wastes are incompatible to each other and may lead to vigorous reactions or the development of toxic fumes. Always inform yourself about the proper way of disposing of your chemical waste. Some waste cannot be disposed to the wastewater system. 
inform yourself what waste can be disposed down the sink and which ones cannot. Never dispose solvents down the sink. To reduce the risk of incompatible reactions of waste and to allow easier disposal of the waste, waste should be separated already in the laboratory. Fire Hazards There are several possible sources for a laboratory fire. The most probable sources are flammable liquids. Flammable and highly flammable liquid can easily be ignited when there is a source of ignition, like an open flame, or sparks, or heat sources, and even electrostatic charges. Sparks may also occur when you plug in electrical devices or turn electrical devices on or off. Highly volatile solvents evaporate quickly. If the vapors are exposed to an ignition source, a fire will result, even if the source is not near the solvent. So if you work with flammable solvents, make sure that there is no source of ignition close by. To avoid the buildup of any flammable vapors when working with highly flammable solvents, work in a fume cupboard. To heat a flammable liquid, use either a water bath, a steam bath, an oil bath or a heating mantle. In some cases, even very simple measures may be sufficient to avoid a big fire. Before working in a chemical laboratory, make sure you know the location of the nearest fire extinguisher, fire blanket and emergency exit. Also, a bucket of sand can efficiently extinguish a fire. If the fire is too large or beyond your control, ring the fire alarm to warn others. In the case of a fire alarm, stop all of your ongoing work. Turn off gas and electric devices. Follow the orders of safety personnel and loudspeaker messages and leave the laboratory quickly and orderly through the nearest safety exit. In the case of a fire alarm, never use electric elevators. Use the stairway instead. After leaving the building, assemble at your designated meeting point and wait for further instructions. By this way, it can be verified that every person has left the building. Don't leave the area without authorization. Safety measures in case of fire. Clearly mark emergency exits. Emergency exits may never be locked. Ensure that emergency exits are always kept free from bags and stored equipment. Attach emergency plans at central locations in the laboratory. Practice correct evacuation procedures in fire drills. First aid. Accidents involving injuries can happen in the laboratory at any time. A first aid box like this is useless. A properly filled first aid box contains band-aids, sterile dressing in various sizes, antiseptic solution, disposable gloves, a pair of scissors, and a report book. All accidents have to be recorded in the book.
When a cut occurs, first rinse it with plenty of running water. Then clean with antiseptic solution. Dry the wound and surrounding skin and cover it with a sterile dressing. If you get burnt, rinse it immediately with plenty of water. You should rinse at least for 10 minutes. If the wound is deep or blistered, consult a doctor. If a liquid gets into your eyes, the eye should be washed immediately with clean running water for at least 10 minutes. Move the eyeballs so that all chemicals are washed out. The eyes should then be checked by a doctor. Note the name of the chemical and give it to the doctor. This information will help him to choose the correct treatment. If chemicals spill over your clothes, remove the contaminated clothes immediately and use the nearest emergency shower. Wash the chemicals off carefully. To ensure that the water in the emergency shower and the eye wash fountain is always clean, the shower and fountain have to be opened at regular intervals to remove the old water from the system. Otherwise, bacteria may grow in the pipes and cause damage to the injured. A chemical laboratory can be a dangerous place. It is in your hands to make it a safer working environment by following the rules and regulations on safe working practices.